Welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy, where in today's video we're going to be discussing key things that you need to know about a medicine commonly used to help control type 2 diabetes, which is called metformin. In this video we're going to cover what metformin is used for and how it works, who can and can't take it, how and when to take it, side effects, potential effects in pregnancy and breastfeeding, as well as possible interactions. As ever, if you do find this video useful, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So what is metformin and what is it used for? Well, metformin is a medicine commonly used to treat type 2 diabetes and gestational diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a form of diabetes where the cells in the muscles, fat and liver become resistant to the hormone insulin. This means that it's harder for the body to control blood sugar levels. Gestational diabetes is a form of diabetes which is transient, meaning that it occurs during pregnancy and then often disappears after you've given birth. Now, whilst these are the two main uses, metformin can also be used to help prevent type 2 diabetes if you're at high risk of developing it, and also in something called polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS. Although it's not officially approved for this use, and in this video we're mainly going to be focusing on its use in diabetes. In terms of how it works, well, metformin lowers your blood sugar levels by improving the way that your body handles insulin, and it reduces the amount of sugar that your liver releases into the bloodstream. So who can and can't take metformin? Well, typically, most adults and children aged 10 and over can take metformin. However, it's not suitable for certain individuals, especially if you've ever had an allergic reaction to metformin, you've got uncontrolled diabetes, you have liver or kidney problems, you have a severe infection, and you're being treated for heart failure or you've recently had a heart attack, or if you've got severe problems with your circulation or breathing difficulties or drink a lot of alcohol. You may also need to stop taking metformin before having surgery where general anaesthetic is involved. This means putting you to sleep for surgery and certain medical tests, such as a scan involving an injection of a dye that contains iodine into the blood. This is not a full and comprehensive list. And if you're uncertain about whether you should take metformin, then it's obviously best to speak to your doctor directly, who's going to be able to advise you on the suitability of metformin for you. This list is just to give you a flavor of some of the key things where metformin might be contraindicated. So now let's take a look and cover when to take metformin and how to take it. Well, metformin typically comes as two different types of tablet, standard tablets on the one hand and slow release tablets on the other. And it's also available as a liquid and sachets for children and people who find it difficult to swallow tablets. Standard tablets release metformin into your body quickly and you may need to take them several times a day, depending on what your doctor advises. Slow release tablets on the other hand work gradually, so you don't have to take them as often. In terms of dosing and strength, well, your doctor will tell you how many tablets to take a day, but the maximum daily dose is usually 2,000 milligrams or two grams a day. Liquid metformin should be taken in five mil doses and usually ranges between 500 and 1,000 milligrams, and sachets similarly come in similar doses. Your doctor will check your blood sugar levels regularly and may change your dose of metformin if necessary. And when you first start taking metformin, you'll be advised to increase the dose slowly because this reduces the chances of getting side effects. If you find that the side effects of standard metformin are affecting you too much, then your doctor may suggest switching to slow release tablets. In terms of how to take it, well, it's best to take metformin tablets with or just after your evening meal to reduce the chances of getting side effects. And you should swallow the metformin tablets whole with a drink of water rather than chewing them. If you're taking metformin sachets, then pour the powder into a glass and add water around 150 ml. Stir it if you need to until the water turns clear or slightly cloudy and then drink the metformin straight away. Treatment for diabetes is usually for life. But if your kidneys are not working properly, your doctor will tell you to stop taking metformin and switch you to a different medicine. And remember, don't stop taking metformin without talking to your doctor, because if you stop taking it suddenly, your blood sugar levels can go up and it can make your diabetes worse. If you accidentally miss a dose of metformin, then skip the missed dose and take the next dose at the usual time. Don't take two doses to make up for the forgotten dose. If you do take too much metformin by accident, then speak to your doctor. You might experience some side effects like stomach pain, loose bowel motions or diarrhea, fast breathing or weakness, for example. Now, what side effects can you possibly develop? Well, like all medicines, metformin can cause side effects, although not everybody gets them. 
Now, there are common side effects of metformin, which happen in more than one in 100 people. And these include things such as feeling sick or nauseous, being sick, so vomiting, diarrhea, stomach ache, loss of appetite, and some people do complain of a metallic taste in the mouth. Taking metformin could also cause a vitamin B12 deficiency. This may present with symptoms such as feeling very tired, having muscle weakness, a sore red tongue, issues with your vision or sensation, and for a full video on B12 deficiency symptoms and signs, please do check out the other video on this channel. Your doctor can check your vitamin B12 level, and if they're too low, they may prescribe vitamin B12 supplements. These can be either as an injection or tablets. Now, some people do ask, can my blood sugar become too low from taking metformin? Well, the good news is, is that metformin doesn't usually cause low blood sugar. This is known as hypoglycemia or hypos when it's taken on its own. But hypos can happen when you take metformin with other diabetes medicines, such as insulin or glycoside. So if you do take metformin in combination with these other diabetic medications, it's worth knowing about this as a possible side effect. If you're planning to exercise more than usual, then make sure you eat carbohydrates like bread, pasta or cereals before, during or after exercise. And if you are diabetic, you should always be carrying a fast acting carbohydrate with you. So things like sugar cubes, fruit juice or some sweets, just in case your blood sugar levels do get too low. I've included more information about hypoglycemia and its symptoms in the description box of this video. You may also need to eat a starchy carbohydrate like a sandwich or a biscuit to maintain your blood sugar levels for longer if you're finding that this is becoming an increasing problem. Now, serious side effects are rare and they happen in less than one in 10,000 people, but you do need to seek urgent medical attention immediately if you get a general feeling of being unwell with severe tiredness, fast or shallow breathing, being cold and a slow heartbeat. You should also seek urgent medical attention if the whites of your eyes turn yellow, your skin turns yellow, although this may be less obvious on darker skin because this can be a sign of liver problems as a side effect of the metformin. There's also a risk of a serious life-threatening allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. However, thankfully, this is very rare. If you do develop swelling of the lips, swelling of the tongue, and finding it difficult to breathe, you must seek urgent medical attention. Now, these are not all of the side effects of metformin, and for a full comprehensive list, please do see the leaflet inside of your medicine packet or speak to your pharmacist if you have any further questions. Now, let's briefly discuss the use of metformin in pregnancy. So, it's generally thought that metformin is safe to take during pregnancy, either alone or in combination with insulin. If your doctor or midwife says that your baby is healthy, it's generally thought to be safe to take metformin whilst breastfeeding. Metformin passes into the breast milk in tiny amounts and it hasn't been linked to side effects in any breastfed babies. However, again, if you do have any concerns, any worries or questions, it is best to speak to your doctor first before taking this or continuing to take it. And if you are planning to get pregnant or if you are pregnant, again, speak to your health provider. Now, what about taking metformin with other medicines or supplements? Well, there are some medicines that can affect the way that metformin works. If you're taking the following medicines, your blood sugar levels may need to be checked more often and your dose changed. Now, these are things such as steroid tablets, things like prednisolone or hydrocortisone. You also should speak to your doctor if you're taking tablets that make you pee more. These are diuretics, things like furosemide. You should also speak to your doctor if you're taking medicines to treat heart problems and high blood pressure or hypertension, male and female hormones such as testosterone, estrogen or progesterone or other diabetes medicines. Your doctor may need to make a small change to your metformin dose if you've just started contraceptive pills. This is because contraceptive pills can change how your body handles sugar. So that was a broad overview of metformin, including what it is, what it's used for, how to take it, and possible side effects. I do hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new, and if you did, please remember to like it. Leave me a comment if you've got any thoughts or you'd like to share your experiences of using metformin, and please do subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you've not done so already. Please also check out the references and resources that I've used to make this video. These can be found in the description box and there's lots more useful information contained within these links and potentially some answers to questions you may have that weren't contained within this video. Finally, I do have to stress that this has been designed as a general educational video, not an individual clinical advice video. 
For legal reasons, please read the full disclaimer in the description box. And if you do have specific individual questions about your own metformin, dosing or levels, please do see your own doctor. As ever, if you have any concerns, questions or worries about your own health, again, see your own health provider. As ever, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.